Hey, welcome back to a, another live. And some of the topics I've been talking about this week, um, for some reason it's come up a couple of times that should we be cutting foods out, especially if it bloats you? The answer is if, to me, in my honest opinion, is that if a food does bloat you, then at least short term, we should be cutting it out whilst we improve our gut health and look to get our body in a position where it's able to handle it. And look at why we're actually bloating. Is it because of stress that food is causing? Is it triggering inflammation or what is actually causing it? But what I'm actually seeing regularly is people that aren't looking deeper into what is actually going on. So for example, people eat meat and then they blow out and say it was the meat causing the problems. So then we cut out red meat and then go to chicken and then we end up going to a plant-based diet. Oh, and I feel great. But then we lose the benefits of getting good quality meat on board. And then we start having problems with B vitamins. We start having problems with methylation, with getting the right folic acid in there. And we get hormonal imbalances. And then I see people that go and say carbohydrates. I literally eat a carb and I put on five pounds because their body isn't digesting it right and it bloats you out. So they cut out carbohydrates and try and go ketogenic. And is that the right way? And then we look at people that go on a very low fat diet because their body isn't digesting fats effectively, so they cut fats out. And the trouble is when we start cutting out certain food groups, including alcohol if you do drink, we eventually stop getting the compliance side of things. We start getting very restrictive. It gets harder to eat out. And not just that, we then lose the benefits that we would get from eating them foods in the first place. Uh, I don't drink. So I don't have the problem with the alcohol side of things, but if you like to go out and you like to have some alcohol, then it can be very restrictive if you're cutting it out all the time. So what I like to do is just to look at what is the reason that you're potentially bloating when it comes to, I don't know why I've got such an itchy eye, um, when it comes to getting these fats in or these foods in there. And that goes into looking at the digestion process. And uh, first off, looking at is people got the right saliva production? Are they chewing their foods? Are they masticating properly? Masticating, not anything else. Are they masticating properly? Basically getting that saliva, chewing it, and getting the actual functions in the mouth. Are they stimulating what we call our vagus nerve properly? And we can look into what to do with those side of things. But one of the big things we see is that the stomach just isn't able to produce the right amounts of stomach acid. Now, if we can't produce the right amounts of stomach acid, we can't then digest protein as effectively. So we then start having problems with actual meat digestion or protein digestion more than anything, rather than just meat, but actual protein. Now, if you're suffering with things like reflux or things like that, that is usually a sign of low stomach acid, but also if we're not able to digest these foods properly, now, one of the problems, again, with low stomach acid is that we then can't digest carbohydrates as effectively because the right levels of stomach acid doesn't just help us break down protein. It helps us signal the pancreas to release something called pancreatic enzymes, which are what break down the starches and the carbohydrates when we have them. And that then also goes to signal the gallbladder which releases biles to break down fat and help your body digest them. Now there could be so many other things going on, but I would absolutely look at how is your gut? How is your gut health? How are other symptoms like brain fog? Are you sleeping through the night? Do you get cold hands and feet? And look at how you can improve your gut health rather than just cutting out whole food groups. Because like, if you like steak, don't go plant-based. If you like to have carbohydrates, don't go keto. Every diet, one single one size fits all diet doesn't work for every single person. It's about finding what works for you and your body. Now, if you are having problems with stomach acid, you could simply uh, supplement with something like beta and HCL with pepsin and see whether that helps you. You can just get that off Amazon and I recommend what to do first off is See if you've got any other problems with underlying issues. If it's all of those, proteins, carbohydrates, and fat, then we potentially look into small intestine bacteria overgrowth called SIBO, and maybe H. pylori, which is an infection, one of the most common infections in the world. 
And I don't want to baffle you and lose you by science, but something you can do to check your gut health, get some apple cider vinegar and do an apple cider vinegar challenge. Two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar on an empty stomach, just down them, just chuck it in and down it and see if there's some burning sensation or really uncomfort, some reflux. You're gonna get a warm feeling, but see if there's something there. And if there is, then we need to do some work on repairing the stomach lining. Drop me a message if that's the case. You can look down D DGL as a supplement, but honestly, look deeper into why these foods are having an impact. Because simply cutting them out could lead to further problems, especially if you cut out fats. I see so many people that go on a low fat diet and then have troubles with hormones and thyroid problems and skin problems, other digestive problems further down the line because they've cut fats out for such a long period of time. We then have to work to be able to get the right amounts of enzymes back in the body. And then they have problems with sludge, which leads to, or gallbladder sludge, which is a precursor to gallstones and all sorts of issues of pain and problems that come on as a result of that. The same with pancreatic enzyme problems with digestion carbohydrates. If we have these foods and we have a reaction in there, we can then have inflammation triggered as a response. And that is absolutely not something which we want within the body. And it's not good leading to brain fog, migraines, fatigue, all other problems in there. And then alcohol, which is one of the biggest things. Now, one of the things that a lot of people can't do is go through effective detoxification. Hence why if people then go on these juice fasts or detox protocols that actually kind of pick up these toxins and move them around, they usually just drop them somewhere else in the body. They basically translocate them. We can't expel those toxins. So if you think about it, like when we go on a detox and we haven't got good detoxification systems working, if you think about an arcade machine and those claws which grab a toy, pick it up and they just drop it somewhere else in the machine rather than down the chute where it needs to go. And that's exactly what your body does when you go on these detox programs and your body isn't able to detox. We have to work on the systems first. A lot of people look to go to this healthy maintenance phase that their body is in these complete stages of working before doing these other steps. And that is essentially what I would go through for the six step, like the maintenance phase is where we want to be. Before that, we have to make sure you have good cell function. Before that, we have to make sure you can eliminate toxins. Before that, we make sure we have good detox systems, a good filtration and drainage. Even before that, we have to make sure we have good digestive support. And before that, we have to have good brain function and neurological support. It all works into one. Now, one of the things that I've been doing recently, and I've had multiple people sign up over the last couple of weeks, is a full health screening. And we go through four really good questionnaires. A brain health screening, which tells you loads of different symptomologies of if you've got poor blood glucose management, stress in the brain, if your brain is connecting to your gut effectively or your immune system and so on. Quick questionnaire to fill out. Gut health questionnaire, which tells you about these things of digesting proteins or digesting fats or carbohydrates. Goes into a little bit of depth with that. And then, am I going to sneeze? Am I? Where was I? So gut health uh, questionnaire, where we go into these different things. Then we go into your genetics, a questionnaire which looks at symptomology of what genes are potentially, what we call impaired, which could say that you then burn through stress so quickly that we end up being burnt out and get addictive tendencies, or we then get potential problems with histamine or whatever it is. And the last one we go through is your adrenal function, which tells us if you've got high cortisol, if you've got low cortisol, if you've got good varied cortisol, which is changing throughout the day. So we can see exactly where your body is at. Now that full health screening is just 99 pounds. And after that, we jump on a call to go through the findings. It's a 30 minute call. We record the call and I can send it to you afterwards if you want it, but we record it. You have all the, the ability to do some certain things to help formulate and, and build the foundations of your help yourself. Now, if you do want to talk further about one-to-one -one coaching after that, you get that 99 pounds taken off the first month of your coaching for full one-to-one -one coaching. So it's essentially a no brainer to see how you can start helping yourself and either go and help yourself or allow me to help you help yourself. So that's something which we definitely look at with this full health screening. And if you are 
very much interested in that. If you are finding that you randomly bloat and you want to get to the bottom of it, literally, then drop me a message. I'll go to www.ojhealth.com and the services tab on there. And you can just sign up straight away. And what happens, you go through to the welcome page. It's got the questionnaires on board and the link to book in your call with me. Thank you for watching. And uh, I look forward to recording some more content. <laughs> Hopefully not having a sneeze and feeling there. Have a great day.